Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches! Sundance Edition! We're here with our fireside chat. Yep. Without the fire. It would have been really hot. But we got our wine. Trying.com slash movie bitches. Uh, Whispering. I don't know why. We've had a great time at Sundance. We thought we would wrap up by sharing with you all everything that we've seen, what we thought, what you should like make sure to go see when it comes out. Um, what you can avoid at e all costs. Exactly. Oh. There were a lot of those this year. Yeah. A little bit. Um, and then we've also posted a bunch of fun pictures and videos on Instagram, so make sure to follow us and look at those if you haven't already, because it was fun. I mean, he just Elba was DJing at the party just because. That might be the bougiest thing that's ever happened to me. I think so. I was at a party where a surprise drop-in by Idris Elba DJing. Sponsored by Grey Goose. It I mean, seems like a fake sentence. It does. But it happened to us. It was our real life. So should we start with the best or the worst? Well, the best was the first that we saw. Yeah. So... Let's start there. So we saw Colette. Oh my god. Starring Keira Knightley. Yep. And Dominic West. Yep. And Demelza from Poldark. Oh, so excited about Demelza. <laughs> you really were. She's great. She came on and you're like, yes! You guys. She is great. Get on that Poldark game. He's hot, she's hot, they're hot together. It's a great show. It's hot. <laughs> it's not really. It's not that kind of, it's not. It's, it's not, not sexual. It's not Utlander. Oh. It's not that sexy, but it's, it's better. Anyway. anyway. Um, so Colette yes. is about the writer, Colette. The French the writer. The French uh, feminist, I guess, writer. Yes. Uh, yes, but like, is the writing feminist or is it just yes. that she's feminist? Okay. Yes. It's all feminist. It's all feminist. Of it. So Karen Ailey plays Colette. I was kind of s uncertain going into this film. And honestly, for the first like 45 minutes. Really? Well, I wasn't uncertain. I was just like, God damn it, if she doesn't leave this fucker soon, I'm walking out of this movie. Oh. But they really did a good job of like yeah, it was a keeping you in engaged. Oh, yeah. The characters were amazing. Yeah. Um, yes. I spent 98% of this movie just being like, yes, bitch, yes! Yes. Like, well, so yeah, so Colette was during the 1890s, a... In France. In France. Um, even though they're all speaking with British accents, I had to get over it. At some point in time, they, the director said they were gonna do French accents. Right, which would have been a accents. accents. Which uh, would have been bad. Yes, it would have been terrible. Unless you have French actors, you know? Yes. You've got Karen Knightley signed on to do this movie, you're doing British accents. Exactly. That's what's happening. Exactly. But the thing that bothered me was then she's writing in French. In French. He also addressed that and was like, I couldn't, like, her writing is so yeah. part of it and so French and so everything. Like, it broke my heart to have her write in English. And I was like, it makes sense. I agree. It was, I, it was a small note where I was like, that's nice though. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Yep. You had to get over it. And it was like, he just had to make a decision. And I feel like in the end, with the circumstances, like, this was the Absolutely. right decision to make. Totally the right decision. So Colette, this fabulous feminist woman yep. who, I love that she never was a victim. No. She had, she was, you know, abused in certain ways and she had bad things happen to her, but she was never like, oh, poor me. You never felt like, oh, poor Colette. You were like, no. yes, bitch, you tell him. Aunt. Yes. You tell him what you want out of your life. And you go have sex with whoever you want. Yes. yes now you're bisexual. I love it. Yes. There if, was none of this apologi apologizing for herself. Never, never. If fun. anything, there were only things where it's like, come on, Colette, you know, like, you you got this. I don't know, I was, I thought they did a really good job. So Dominic West plays her husband, who's older, he's sort of a playboy. All I would say is, they really rounded out his character. I thought, so I didn't hate him. Yes. I didn't like him, yes. and I knew that this was doomed. But, like, he brought the humor to it and a sort of lightness and because she wasn't all oh i'm a victim oh sad me oh whatever yes. like she never let him really get away with that much shit i agree that like it was balanced and i feel like they, you understood they did a good job of really balancing those characters in a way too that showed like that she needed him he helped her to grow yeah and then she outgrew him exactly and i loved that and it it was it was it's really good and you just should, should go, just see, go it. see it but as fabulous as every single thing about this movie was, the most fabulous thing oh was the costumes. I want them all. I'm obsessed. Every single outfit. And we asked the director about it. It was this woman who went on Etsy 
and found all these original clothes because they don't make that kind of fabric anymore. And he said something really interesting where Colette is constantly wearing black or white or dull colors and yet she stands out from everyone else because of how it's put together or yep. she's slightly masculine or she's doing something a little edgy or a little different or whatever and he's like that's so true i mean, I mean was, that strike I just, number i everything Ugh. all of them everything all except of them. for the very first dress sure. which was supposed to be bad yes the yellow dress Ugh. that was gross yeah but um no i thought it was really really fabulous yeah i would and like one of the best representations of like bisexuality yes and like different forms of love and different partners and all of that like it didn't judge it all of these these french salons with all these fabulous people just being fabulous yes and performance art and it was just like Mimes it and really like, captured that like i wish i was there absolutely this is so fabulous yes. and it's just i don't know it did a really good job i would say this is probably one of the best female empowerment LGBT stories oh, yes. that I've seen in a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's really well done in, in those aspects. I would 10,000 times to one champion this over Call Me By Your Name. Because well, this actually does this something. This reminded me of what I wish Danish Girl had been. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Everything wrong with Danish Girl, this, this does did right. perfectly. Yeah. It was just like, oh, yes. Yeah. I appreciate every single touch and moment, and the characters were just really well developed. That's true. I thought it was great. Oh, and I loved the score. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just a good movie. You should go see it. Go see it. Period. So another movie that we saw, <laughs> oh boy, uh, was called Timeshare, and it's a uh, Spanish film <laughs> that had an interesting premise that unfortunately didn't... Its, its premise was greater than its... Parts, yeah, or, or the sum of its parts. Or yeah. Well, so the premise is right. <laughs> uh, it's this family that goes um, on vacation to this paradise timeshare, right? It's a huge resort. Um, and the idea. The write-up is that like nefarious things are happening under the surface in this timeshare, and it's not what it seems. Corporate greed, etc. And it seemed like it was going to get very sort of absurd and dark and like and whatever. Wacky. Yeah. Um, and it never did. No, nothing ever not, really not happened. Really. It was weird. So the, the score is telling me it's spooky and weird, and the visuals are somewhat telling me it's spooky and weird, and the way people are acting is telling me it's somewhat spooky and weird, and yet it was boring. Yep. Strangely enough, the spookiest part was the end credits. They show all this sort of like um, promo footage for like, come join our timeshare. And then like weird Snapchat filters of people's mouths getting like really big start happening. I was like, oh, this is creepy, but it's I not represented been... at all in the film. No, what? and I wish that that had been the intro to it, right? Yeah. I, or and maybe... then throughout it had been more like, the, the veneer is falling apart. They're spying on you. There's yeah. cameras everywhere. They're doing this. Like, they put a camera up his nose. I thought that was what... Because basically he gets his nose broken. And at some point he pulls a big old tampon out of his nose. And I thought it was going to be like a bug or a right. camera or something. It wasn't. I just wish more happened. It was very much like The Prisoner. Like that old TV show where it's like, and we're trapped here. And weird things are happening. Are they drugging us? Are they not? But it's all very at a one. Yeah. And Prisoner's at like an eight. You know? Right. So you're like, well... You know, so, I mean, there was some fabulous close-up shots of flamingos. Yes, there were. That was my favorite part. I was like, yes to these flamingos. Flamingos? Flamingos. 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 Flamingos Flamingo is dancing. Flamingos. Yes. Yeah. Like, I could have watched ten minutes of that, and I'm not joking. I mean, that's just planet Earth. This movie turned into planet Earth for a good minute and 35 seconds. It was, it was like a lot of questions were left yes. unanswered Completely. and some questions weren't even asked. Um, yeah. <laughs> nothing ever really comes to anything. Nope. Um, so, and like the evilness, like the evilness of the corporate corporation isn't that evil. No. It's, it's like, yeah. Just they want to sell you a timeshare. Well, it's like they want to sell you a timeshare and yes, they invaded your privacy. Yes. Which isn't good. No. But it made it like the building of the music and the tension right. and the whatever. You're expecting them to be like, and now you're our sex slave. Exactly. Or, like and now, now you will, you will buy this timeshare like, and, and you will human be. human sacrifice you into yeah. this volcano. Like it, it, it was supposed to go somewhere. It just yeah. seemed It nowhere. made it seem like if you signed the timeshare agreement, then you would have sold your soul. So and found, you, found, yeah. you know, you're like, oh shit. But it wasn't that. No, it really wasn't. So it was kind of boring. So then next we saw Ophelia. Oh my gosh. So, disclaimer right now. Yeah. This movie is 
a campy hot mess. Oh, um, yeah. And yes. we're going to do a full review on it because there's a lot to dissect. When we get back into town, yeah. I need to talk about it. Yes. So this is going to be short and sweet. Yep. So Ophelia is based off of a, a book that... It's based off of a YA novel. Yes. Of Hamlet from Ophelia's perspective. So I read that thinking, that sounds like hot garbage because... She's not in that many scenes, guys, let's be honest, right? And, like, she dies two-thirds of the way through the play, spoilers for a Hamlet. Um, and so you're like, well, how is this going to work? And I thought, well, it's at Sundance. Maybe this will be sort of interesting and feminist and sort of like a, a real, I don't know, micro look into the behind the scenes of Hamlet or something like that. You know, I thought they would do something interesting with yeah. it, right? Because no. it's Sundance. So I'm going, this is going to be weird and offbeat and indie. This was a CW television show. It really was. I mean... It was like rah-rah, feminism, yeah, girl power, tweens, Hamlet's hot, let's make out. Like, it was... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It was, the fact that it was at Sundance is the most mind-boggling. If it just had come out in February, yeah. I'd be like, yes, let's go see this like real campy Ophelia movie with Naomi Watts. Yes. And Daisy Ridley. Oh, right. <laughs> and Clive Owens. <gasps> and Clive, Clive Owen's wig. wig. I think that Clive, Clive Owen's wig, wig is what broke the light. It is. It was that atrocious. It was, <laughs> it was just it was so bad. It was. I laughed so fucking hard at the world premiere of this movie, <laughs> and I felt bad. But I was like, I couldn't. <laughs> how many? How many people approved that wig? But like, I would say, Def, go see it. Oh yeah. Whenever this fi movie finally comes out, it might be next February. Um, I feel like it needs to get like out in a su the summer. Sure. With a, a hip top twenty soundtrack. Yeah, I'm here for it. It's like counter programming to some like superhero movie, right? Ooh. It was the best mess I've ever seen. Wow. Like at Sundance. Oh. Yes. So the next movie that we saw was called Summer of '84. Yeah. Um, it's the same three directors that did Turbo Kid, which, which we loved. I really loved. It was great. Um, if you haven't seen Turbo Kid, it's really fun. It's really fun. And it's like a dystopian future robot '80s throwback synth. Michael Ironside. Go watch it. It's really fun. Um, so this is their follow-up movie. Yeah. They said at the beginning, they were like, this is a very different movie. Yes. And I was like, oh no, because I really like Turbo Kid. Um, this movie has stuck with me. Okay. Basically, it's Stand By Me, it's It, it's Stranger Things, but darker. That's how I, that's how they're going to pitch it. Pretty least. much. It's four young boys, nerdy ball boys in 1984 summer. What do we do? We think our neighbor is a serial killer. Yeah. And they go on this sort of dark journey to figure that out. Yep. The first hour is really just jerk off jokes. Yeah, there's a lot of jerking off. Let's look at these girls through binoculars and try and see their yabos. It was like, I'm, I get it. I'm getting the fatigue of the 80s nostalgia for young boys riding on bikes, talking on walkie talkies. Yep. Nerdy, you know, oh, girls. Ugh. Um, I've seen it. I'm just like, it's like happening a lot. Yeah. And I'm just like, I want, first of all, I want this nostalgia of the 80s to transfer to the nostalgia of the 90s because I'm ready for it. Rude. <laughs> Andrew made these cookies yesterday. I'm super ready for the 90s nostalgia to begin. Yes. Every the decade, 80s had their time, now it's in the 90s. Every time. decade deserves their nostalgia, right? Yeah. And I'm just ready for it to transfer because I feel like we've been in the 80s for the past 20 years. Um, so I'm ready for that. Yeah. Was Easy A, was she obsessed with 80s movies or 90s movies? 80s movies. That's mm. what I'm saying. It's, it's always, and, and the 80s were great, and the 80s had great movies, and, and a lot of style, but I'm just, I'm ready for it, because I feel like there's like little details, 90s details, that could be explored. Yeah. And, you know, they could have more diversity in their young, nerdy, white boys, and one of them's fat. Yeah. It's always the same. There are two women in this movie. One is his mother, yeah. and one is the, the hot girl that he's into. It's who... generic, hot babysitter, blonde babysitter, who's, oh, I like you for inexplicable reasons. And you're like... She's just a fantasy. Yeah. And I'm, it made me frustrated. There was one thing I appreciated, too. So, the serial killer that's on the loose in this movie is killing young boys. And I actually really appreciated that it wasn't young, vulnerable ladies. Yes. And I was like, that was different too. I liked that. That's true. Well, and that, I mean, 
I was like, On one yeah. hand, you could say that they were doing that just so that it was more frightening for the main characters because they were all men. But yes. also, yes. it at least was a different thing where it was like, oh, right. And then he, like, you know, it rapes did. and murders these young girls. And you're like, oh. It didn't turn into, oh, no, the babysitter, the hot babysitter got kidnapped. We have to save her because he's going to kill her. Right. I was like, thank God. That, yeah. I, I did appreciate that. That's true. But I am over this adorably perverted leads. I agree. Of like, well, it's okay because they're harmless because they're dorks. And I'm like... No. Not really. It's and gross. yeah, it is gross. It's, it's gross. like they're they're spying on this woman through binoculars. They are peeping toms. That's not okay behavior. And and but like they justify it by having the main guy be like, "You guys should stop and respect her, even though I do it when I'm alone by myself, because that's cool. When it's not a group activity, and I'm like, okay. So all I'll say is, we're talking shit about this movie. But at a certain point, this movie changes. And gets darker. And I don't want to say what happens, because I really think that the ending makes this movie great. I agree. Oh, I don't know if it makes it great. It, it makes, makes it, it worth, worth watching. Sleep. I agree. I. This movie was good. It was good. And I think a lot of people will like it. Yeah. I think had it come out two years ago, I maybe would have liked it more. I'm sure. Because I'm just a little fatigued with this same same. Yep. Um, but the ending really got me, and it stuck with me. And the more I think about it, I'm like, that made this movie different. That's the only thing that made, made this movie different. different and unique and like fucked up. And maybe that was their intent. Maybe it like was... lulled you. Exactly. Of... We're just gonna do the same kind of thing. Ooh, it's like Stranger Things. Ha ha ha. You're like, oh god. You know. Well, you and you read the description to me, and you're like, set to an '80s synth backdrop, and I was like, I'm in. It's a good movie. It's a good movie, and all the kids were very good. I thought the yes. performances were good. Yes. I just wish the, the main lead looks like the guy from Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. It's crazy. He doesn't? That's okay. He you really think he does. looks like Gregory Smith, and I don't he think he really does. He really does. I thought they all did great performances. I thought the characters were very one dimensional. Yes. And that bothered me. There is one of the kids is basically Edward Furlong from Terminator 2, and that was making me laugh. I was like, who's this? <laughs> But then he's just making like, oh, I'm fucking your mom jokes the whole movie. Yeah. And you're like, ha ha, okay, I'm over it. Yep. I think a lot of people will like it. And I, I think so too. And I really did like it, and I really did like it the more I thought about it. Sure. But it is a little Cliché. cliched, and the first hour is a little slow. Yeah, I agree. Because there's a lot of the same, there's the trend in horror movies now where nothing's really scary, it's startling. Yeah. Which I'm really over. It's this sort of lull, like, ah! and you go, oh, <sighs> But that's not the same as being scared. That's, right. That's, I'm exhausted by the end of this movie because I've been startled. Yes. And now I'm just kind of exhausted. You're like on edge constantly. Tired. I hate that more than anything. Where where I feel like silence is the scariest thing. Sure. And and people aren't utilizing it. Yeah. Like the, the creepiest things are the things where nothing's happening and my mind is going, oh no. And that was this... I won't say why because I don't want to spoil the ending. That was the scariest part of the movie. Yep. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. So anyway, Summer of 84. Worth a watch, not groundbreakingly fabulous. Agreed. Cheers to Sundance. Yes. And we'll see you soon with more reviews and all of the above.